As the world gradually reopens for business, uh, what's it all mean for the agriculture industry? Consider the case of Corteva. That's the agri-science company that was created when Dow Chemical and DuPont merged with their ag divisions and then spun them off as a separate company roughly a year ago. This is a stock that caught fire late last year when the Trump administration reached a preliminary trade agreement with China that included some fabulous goodies for the ag industry. But then the pandemic hit, and from late February through late March, the stock plunged from the low 30s to just 20 bucks. Though since then, it's rebounded to nearly 26. So how's Corteva doing? Earlier this month, the company reported some fabulous numbers, terrific sales, great earnings beat. But they also gave some cautious commentary. They warned of looming currency headwinds, crop price uncertainty, and a potential global recession. Thanks to the uncertainty, they declined to give forward guidance. After rallying right out of the gate, the stock stumbled on that commentary. But it came roaring back lately now that Wall Street's getting excited about the recovery. And that's why Cortepa rallied an astonishing 4.5% today. Can it keep climbing? Let's check in with Jim Collins, the CEO of Corteva. Learn more about how his company's doing and where it's headed. Mr. Collins, welcome to Mad Money. Hey, great, Jim. Uh, thanks for having me. Uh, it's been uh, almost a year uh, since we talked last, uh, back in June of 2019, when we launched uh, Corteva uh, as a publicly traded uh, pure play uh, ag, ag company. And uh, a lot's happened since then, uh, but we've got an amazing team and we're, uh, we're executing really well in the marketplace. And- okay, so can you tell, because it's your first time on, uh, we want to talk about crop protection as a business and seed as a business, because you're number one in seed. Crop protection is a bit of a battle. But uh, if you can just tell us where the, what it means, a pipeline, how it influences you, what, what the science means. Yeah, I think you've, what you've hit on is one of the key strategic advantages that we have going forward. It's the strong foundation around technology and innovation in our pipeline. You know, I think we have a product lineup uh, second to none. Uh, on the seed side, uh, we have strong market shares in corn and soybeans and canola, uh, rice ar- around the world, uh, and crop protection, especially those products used on, on fruits and vegetables, insecticides and fungicides. You know, we, we enjoy a real strength and our traditional strength in herbicides and crops like, uh, like wheat and, and corn and beans. So one of the things you also take away is we're a very diverse company. Uh, we sell into 14. Di- we sell seeds in 14 different crops uh, and in a, and, and chemistry in o- over 140 countries uh, around the world. So uh, a real strength with that with that pipeline and that product lineup in seed and chemistry. Now, see, when I uh, went over your numbers, I thought they were really good. And then I, I did admit, I have to admit, that I got a little confused about pulling of guidance because I think you're one of those companies that has so many things going for it. I mean, you know, it's an election year, so the farmers get get a bell. Usually they do well. Uh, maybe things will simmer down with China. Brazil's not that big with the real. Uh, and I'm looking for something that would be a core holding away from the cyclical character of deer. Right. So you're right, Jim. We had a strong first quarter, 16 percent rise in net sales, uh, double digit growth essentially in every region around the world and 53 uh, percent EBITDA growth uh, going forward. And uh, what I've said before, you know, we're really demonstrating the strengths, uh, uh, our key competitive advantages that we have of our portfolio, but also our distribution system, that unmatched connection that we have with, with farmers Add to that this very strong company-wide focus on operational excellence. Uh, and, and then we just support growers and food security um, all around the world. So we're, uh, we're carrying strong momentum into, into second quarter. Uh, and probably the main reason is we look to the second half and, and, and out of caution, uh, taking a pause on guidance was really related to mostly currency and heavily affected by the Brazilian RAI. So uh, we've immediately pivoted. We've put some strong pricing programs in place to try to cover part of that currency impact. Um, We've got new hedging uh, techniques that we're deploying to help cover some of that. Um, I've got my team all around the world looking at additional cost productivity. We've talked about adding another $100 million worth of uh, worth of cost productivity. Uh, and then, like I said, we're a very diverse business. So we're going to go chase new business opportunities in other areas of the world that maybe aren't as currency affected. So I would say that by the end of 2020, I would hope to cover a majority of the impact, but it's just a little too uncertain right now to call exactly what that Brazilian RAI is going to be in November when it really matters the most to got us. Got it. Got it. Now, how about uh, the flood in Midland? Where are we with, uh, with your operation? Yeah, thank you for asking a horrible 500-year flood. Uh, Biggest impact right now, uh, clearly um, operations were shut down out of abundance of safety and caution, and our teams are 
uh, evaluating uh, the, the impact of that. Um, only 1% of our second half revenue is dependent on any of the products uh, that come out of Midland. So as far as uh, uh, 2020 goes, we, we would expect you know, a minimal impact. Give me a few days, let those teams uh, understand the full impact of, of, to our operating units. But as we sit here right now, the water crested lower than we expected. The, the impact on the units was less. And my biggest concern right now is, is for our employees. We've had over 400 uh, of our Corteva colleagues that were directly affected in their homes uh, in the city of Midland. And we're going to work awful hard to make sure they're taken care of as well. OK, uh, one last thing. It matters tremendously uh, the price of corn. Uh, the, it, there is a, uh, a lowering of gasoline that has to impact uh, ethanol. What is the way it works with Corteva? Right. So, you, as you know, Jim, we're, we uh, we supply a large majority of the corn seed in, in the northern um, hemisphere. And that's based on our product performance and, and, and the way um, our, our germplasm and our traits uh, have interacted together. So, you know, we felt really good about planting season here of 2020, and we've got a good crop going in the ground. But we need to see how that crop performs uh, here this year. And then we're going to have two more seasons to look at uh, crop performance in Latin America before we come back around to trying to predict what commodity prices are going to be in, in going into 2021. The ethanol industry is clearly a, a big impact for that. They grind a lot of corn. And we're seeing some um, actually encouraging news out of the transport industry that as this recovery might be mm. coming back a little right. faster than everyone expected, people driving more cars, using more ethanol, that, uh, that, uh, um, that blend requirement um, will really help open these ethanol plants back up. Another thing to watch for, there's not a lot of industry storage of ethanol. So as gasoline demand comes back, those ethanol plants are going to have to get up and run uh, pretty quickly. Well, that's a pretty good story. I know you had to withdraw the guidance, but I think longer term, you've got a lot of things going for you, Jim. You really do. Thank great. you so much Thanks. for coming on Mad Money. It's always great to see you. Thank you. Always great to see you, too. Okay, Thanks, that, Jim. That's Jim Collins, Corteva. Uh, he's the CEO, CTVA. This is a much better stock to own, I believe, than Deer, if you want to play the ultimate long-term food industry in general. Mad Money's back after break. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at cnbc.com or give us a call at 1-800-743-CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.